One of our viewers uh, asked, I would love to see a video talking about how to create your own style based on brushwork, colors, etc. Well, I bet you'll be surprised at what I say. Well, before I get into that, I just want to uh, for you to take a look at two paintings, one done by Edward Hopper, one done by Andrew Wyeth, of a similar subject. They're both houses, but when you look at them, you can see the style is really different. And if you started analyzing that style uh, as to brushwork, you might say, well, there's similar brushwork in there. Maybe a little different, a little bit different texture in places, but another painting of Hopper's might have a little bit of texture, so the style couldn't be based on that, could it? Um, and then you might look at the way they, their accuracy in, in drawing the houses. Well, you can brace the style on that because they both seem relatively accurate. When I say accurate, I mean it's not exaggerated or not distorted. They both seem concerned about communicating um, pretty pretty good accuracy as far as perspective and those kinds of things are concerned. Well, you might say, well, color. Well, look at the color. There's not a whole lot of color in either one of these, although in other paintings they have done, they might use more, more color one way or the other. So you could go through those uh, those elements. You could even go through um, uh, you, could, you could even go through the interpretation well, and you try to play with that. And when it comes right down to it, it's hard to put your finger on what the style is. And at the same time, if you walked into a room and you see these two paintings hanging on a wall, even if they're hanging side by side, you know they're not done by the same artist. So, and also to give you another example, uh, I remember as a college student, going to the post office and pulling my mail out and looking at the handwriting, not at the return address, but looking at the handwriting to see who wrote me or who wrote me that day or from, from whom I got a letter that day. I'd always recognize my mother's handwriting. I would always recognize my aunt's handwriting. So I could tell just by looking at the handwriting. The letters might be shaped the same, uh, might even be written with the same kind of pen and the same kind of paper, but the handwriting itself told me from whom I was receiving that letter. It, all that is related. So if you're trying to develop your style, you'll probably not develop a true style. You'll probably develop something that is fake and not, a, uh, not a, even akin to who you are as an artist. So I have five uh, principles, I think, that if you will uh, pay attention to these principles, then you'll be surprised at how your style will evolve and become yours. And people can look at your work and know it's your work. First, focus on your skill. Developing your skill is absolutely paramount, paramount to style. Because if you don't know how to do something, uh, then you don't, don't really have the ability to express yourself beyond being awkward. And so focusing your attention on your skill to develop those skills so that they become natural to you is the first principle towards allowing or, or towards your own style evolving. Now we can go back to my example about the handwriting. Uh, when we were all in, in kindergarten, first grade, whenever it was, we learned to form letters by what we knew were the shapes of those letters. As we grew older, each one of us had found, or we didn't do it on purpose. Well, somebody, some people do it on purpose, and when they do, you know it's contrived. You can look at handwriting and think that, and you'll know instantly it's contrived. But those who allow their, don't even think about how the handwriting really, really looks, they're just making it legible, will evolve a style of the way they shape their letters and the way they link their letters together. So, focusing on your skill. Is going to uh, is going to then be very very important in developing your style in your style. Another thing that's important: pay attention to what moves you. Now, one thing we might know about these two artists that uh, what moved Andrew Wyeth was 
the lives of sp specific people. He got to know the people who lived in this house. He, he meandered in the house. He did paintings on the inside of the house. He did paintings of the people who lived inside the house. So this house, for him, is like a living being that people, uh, people who he is very familiar with live in and occupy. For Edward Hopper, a house represents more of an urban culture or he's looking more at humanity as a whole and the way humanity lives as a whole. So two different attitudes. So what I mean, pay attention to what moves you. What really interests you? Because that kind of thing is going to feed your painting. And limit your the subjects that you choose to only things that interest you. Don't paint something just because you think it's going to sell. Well, you can do that. That's not going to help your style any. Uh, but don't focus on subjects that somebody else is interested in because that doesn't really give you the full communication. Focus on things that interest you and pay attention to what interests you. No, that you might even pay attention to what kind of paintings interest you, what subjects interest you. So that's important. Developing an awareness of what interests you. And here's a very important one and that is avoid intentionally forming your work to look like another artist's work. A lot of painters think, a lot of uh, beginners especially think, I want to paint like you, or I want to paint like Rembrandt, or I want to paint like Monet. Well, you may want to paint like them, but and you may be able to Im imitate their style, but it won't be your style. It'll be their style, and what you do will be an imitation of that style. Um, so don't even aim at intentionally forming your style uh, to like another artist's work. Now, there's a difference between what I just said and you're studying other artists. To study an other artist, you're studying what they do technically uh, or compositionally. When you're studying those things, that is for the sake of learning the technical part of creating paintings or creating sculptures as far as that's concerned. But to, to try to imitate the style, futile. All you'll ever be able to do is a fake version of what that artist did. Okay, another thing, avoid camouflage. Now, what do I mean by that? That is trying to make your work look like you think other folks want it to look like. Trying to form your style or the way you communicate, maybe the way you do your colors or the way you shape your images to appear as you think will please other people. That's a mistake. You form those to make them feel most real to you. What, uh, what, whatever you do in there, and this is technical, so that's going back to focusing on your skill. Once you have your skills developed, you'll, you'll, you'll have that ability to know how to shape uh, images with um, all the compositional elements. Do it according to your personal response. And don't even let the thought come into your mind about how it's going to please other people without, because that will camouflage your style that will form your style, allow your style to move in a direction other than representing who you are. And then the fifth one, be patient. Style does not develop overnight. Style emerges. The real, uh, the, the truest definition of style is that it is a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of your individual uniqueness. And what happens to the style is as a result of the way you respond to the world, not an inten intentional thing. So if you're forming it intentionally by any way to try to make it look this way or that way, um, that's not your style. That is a camouflage. Just be patient and your style will emerge. And you will reach a period, and it'll be, it will be sooner than you think, you'll reach a period where somebody will look at your painting and not have to look at the signature and know that it was you who did it. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. Thanks for watching.